Today, I am very excited to be speaking with Congressman Buddy Carter of Georgia's first congressional district. Representative Carter serves on the House Committee on Energy and Commerce and the House Budget Committee. Welcome, Representative Carter. Thank you for speaking with me today. Well, thank you for having me. I'm very excited. Uh, we've been participating in Congressional App Challenge for, for a couple of years now, and it's a great program, and we're very excited to be doing it again this year. Well, thank you. And with that, I'll jump right into the first question. So the Congressional App Challenge's mission is to inspire middle and high school students to learn to code and pursue careers in computer science and STEM. So why do you think students should participate in the Congressional App Challenge? Well, you know, first of all, I, it, it's an honor and a privilege for me to represent the 1st Congressional District of Georgia. And we try to encourage as many students as we can to be involved, particularly in STEM programs. STEM programs are very important. Unfortunately, a lot of students are under the, the false impression that they have to be at the top of their class with either math or science in order to participate in something like this. And that's not true. We've got um, a, a lot of, of examples of where students have, have really um, been able to flourish in this area who weren't necessarily at the very top of their class. And we wanna make sure that people understand that, the students understand that, and wanna make sure they understand the opportunities that exist out there. This is the future, there's no question about that. And we want to encourage as many students as we can to, to become involved in it. That's great. And the App Challenge is a bipartisan initiative with support from both Republicans and Democrats. Why do you think um, political members, regardless of their political affiliation, should hope App Challenges within their districts? Well, as you say, this is bipartisan. Look, um, when we're talking about careers, when we're talking about um, encouraging young people to become involved in in, in areas that, is going, that are going to benefit society, that, that shouldn't be a partisan issue at all. And, and I don't think that members of Congress look at it in that perspective. I think they look at it from a perspective of, oh, we just need to make sure that we've got as many people involved in this, as many students, and, and encourage them to become involved because this is the wave of the future and it's gonna benefit our society with as many people as we can being involved in it. And we have students of all coding abilities participating in the challenge. Do you have any advice for students who are interested in the challenge? Well, my advice would be to, you know, do your research and, and to make sure you understand what's out there. So often, it's been my experience that students get frustrated because they don't know what's available. And, and that's one thing we wanna make sure that everyone understands what's available out there because there are great programs, great opportunities that are available. And, and that is somewhat incumbent on us. And when I say us, I mean uh, us in leadership positions and us in Congress to, to make sure that they are educated and that they're informed of the opportunities that exist out there. And because we, I, I think the saddest story would be for someone not to become involved simply because they were not aware that there were programs that existed out there that could help them get started. And why is early intervention in STEM and computer science so important? Well, it's important because we need to make sure that um, these areas and these jobs and these careers are fulfilled, uh, as, as I've said. Uh, this is important to the future of our country. And, the, the, you know, I always say that the greatest innovators, the greatest scientists in the world are right here in the United States of America. And they are. And, and you know, tapping into that talent, tapping into that potential, if you will, that, that, we, that exists within our society is extremely important. And that's why the Congressional App Challenge is just an, a great example of, of what we're trying to do to get more people involved and for them to understand that they can do it, that, 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 that there is that the opportunity for them to do it and that they can achieve this. And along that idea, what do you think the long-term benefits of hosting the Congressional App Challenge are? Well, I think you, you only have to look back to, to the success that we've had in the previous years and, and see that um, 
you know, this helps. Um, you know, we need to continue on with programs like this. The Congressional App Challenge has been a success and it continues to be a success. And, um, you know, it, the, the moment that we stop encouraging young people to become involved in STEM and to become involved in, in other areas where our future is going to be very dependent, then that's gonna be a sad time in this country. And that's why um, we look at this, the Congressional App Challenge as being such a great resource for our country and for our future. Now, the switch to online learning this past year revealed significant learning equity gaps across the nation. As a former member of the Education and Workforce Committee, what do you think should be done to get rid of this educational disparity across the country? Well, certainly one of the, one of the contributing factors to that is the uh, lack of broadband and high-speed internet in some of our rural areas, and we have some urban deserts as well, where we don't have uh, the access to, to rural broad, or to um, broadband and high-speed internet. And that's something that I serve on the Energy and Commerce Committee now, and that's something we're trying to address in the Energy and Commerce Committee, is how we make sure that this is available so that everyone has the same opportunity and has the, the, the same ability to, to tap into this. It's different now, as you stated. Uh, virtual learning has become um, become an integral part of, of what our future is going to look like. Uh, hopefully, we get back to in-person learning, and I think that's extremely important, but I don't think that virtual learning is going to go away completely. That's why it is extremely important and incumbent upon us in Congress to make sure that we're addressing the issue of rural broadband and, and, and urban deserts of broadband and making sure that high-speed internet and broadband is available to those in those areas. Is there a piece of technology that you can't live without? That I can't live without? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably my cell phone. I mean, you know, anymore, it's my memory. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I can't go, you know, I hate to admit that, but, but truthfully, I, I think it is. And what a great piece of innovation but at the same time, I'm, I'm definitely too dependent on it. But, um, you know, losing your phone is like, oh, my gosh, I, you know, I've lost a, a piece of my clothing. I'm naked. I don't know what to do. And it, it's just one of those things that um, I and I don't think I'm the only person who's like that. I think that um, definitely I think that probably the majority of, of people in, in society now are that way as well. And what is the latest piece of technology that excites you? The latest piece of technology that excites me? That's an interesting question. Um, hmm. You know, I, I guess just, uh, and, and maybe I, this is um, a little stale and, and a little um, aged now, but, um, you know, being able to take so many pictures and videos on your phone and, and the quality by which they exist. And, you know, I'm, I'm a grandparent now, so I've got grandbabies. As you can imagine, I dot all over them. And, uh, you know, and, and taking pictures with your phone and having a camera with you at all times, that, that's pretty amazing to me as a grandparent. So, and, and again, I know that's uh, not cutting edge because it's been around for quite a while, but I, I think that I would just add that it's the quality I think you can take as, as good a quality picture with your phone now as you can with some of the nicest cameras out there. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me today. To our viewers, remember the 2021 Congressional App Challenge is live so students can register and submit their apps between now and November 1st. Thank you, Congressman Carter. Thank you.